Hello, everybody. This is Professor Burko, and I want to share with you this whole idea of creating a thesis and proposing a topic through the process of discovery. I have another video about the process of discovery after this one, but I think that part of this might be best communicated with a little bit of storytelling and insight from a professor who's dealt with literally thousands of students over the years trying to also develop their thesis and their proposal for a research paper topic. You know, going back to high school and junior high school, maybe the idea of writing a paper like this was you propose a thesis, you're stuck with it, you got to work on it all semester long and support your thesis. And oh boy, going all the way back again to high school, you get all these cliche topics like gun control and abortion. And the reason I don't like those is because you don't really go into the library with an open mind, with a, a sense of inquiry to, to learn from what you read. You already have really strong feelings about abortion. You're either pro-choice or, um, or else you're on the other side, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, the point is, is that all you want to do is accumulate some a few quotes to support your already per perceived, preconceived idea of what's right in that debate. A, a true college level thesis and a really good project is part of the process of inquiry, much like a scientific experiment. You go into a lab, you mix a bunch of chemicals up, you have a theory about what might happen, you observe what happens and your, your original theory may be wrong. That's okay, there's nothing wrong with being incorrect in your first thesis. You prove that your original idea was not right. That's a good thing. That crosses off one thing from your list. You mix up the chemicals again. You make another hypothesis. And then this time around, you're closer to what you uh, predicted, OK? So let me share a story about how this works, give you an idea. A student who was playing for the Shasta College baseball team proposed a thesis to me at the beginning of the semester one year about this performance enhancing supplement that he was really interested in, androsamine. And his original thesis was androsamine is a safe, legal performance enhancing supplement that will help uh, a ball player build stamina and perform better. So he started doing some research and he went into the library, started reading and he got really freaked out. And he sent me this email saying, my project is, is no good because my thesis is wrong, what I'm discovering through my research is that actually androsamine, um, players called it andro back in those days, Mark McGuire, Barry Bonds, all the, the home run hitters were taking this supplement and thinking that it was legal, right? Well, what he discovered was that it was really bad for the body, that it was hurting the kidneys, that it was possibly leading to cardiovascular disease, all sorts of bad things. Yeah, sure, it pumped up your muscles, you hit more home runs, you ran faster, you had more stamina, but in the long run, it was really bad physically. And, and I sent an email back to the student. I said, no, this is perfect. What's happening is you are discovering the truth through your research in the library. What he had done is he had been reading about androsamine and coming up with all of this evidence to show that it was not a safe drug. So he flipped his thesis and he wrote a really wonderful paper saying that androsamine is not a safe legal, uh, not a safe uh, performance enhancing supplement and that it probably should be made illegal. And he, uh, not only did he write the paper, he shared it with all his teammates and they all stopped taking the supplement because they realized that it was bad for their body. Now let's review that story and think about it a little bit. Unlike going into the library and you're on one side of the abortion debate or the other and you're just trying to find quotes to support your preconceived bias, what's really happening with that ball player and his thesis was he was doing some real research. He was reading peer-reviewed journal articles from journals of medicine and um, you know research and, and you know experts in the field and discovering what was really going on with the research on that particular drug. And here's where it works with your proposal. Okay, you want to go into the library with a research question and answer that research question legitimately with an open mind. Read what you find in the library, become an expert on your topic 
and then marshal all the information together and come up with a six to 10 page research paper that supports your working thesis. Now your working thesis could evolve, could change through the process of discovery, through learning more about what you're writing about through the research process, through the drafting process, through the thinking, critical thinking process. And I'd like to relate this back to um, my ongoing theme in this accelerated class about, uh, you know, the problems with artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is, intelligence is not intelligent. It is not thinking. It is just scraping data off of the internet and plopping it into a document and it's not at all like this process of discovery where you go out as the writer of the uh, research paper and discover the truth. You want to cut out that computer thinking process and do the thinking on your own. Um, so among other things, what we're teaching with this research paper project is the process of critical thinking, of coming up with a question, uh, searching for the true answer, which becomes your thesis, and then developing a paper through several drafts uh, to make that paper just really sing, to make it a uh, college level work of academic scholarship, right? And that may take two or three drafts. It may take going to work with the writing center and getting feedback from somebody else uh, to get you to the point where you're really proud of this where it's a college level work that would be accepted at Chico State, at Stanford, at UC Berkeley, at Harvard, at any other college in the country. And again, I want you to think about this. You're gonna have research papers in every single discipline beyond my class. So that's why we're studying this. You are learning how to write a research paper in the engineering world, if you become an engineer or in the nursing world, if you become a nurse or um, you know, in the business world, if you study business, all of those academic majors, no matter what you take in college, are going to assign research papers along the way. And this is when you'll learn how to write one. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, send me an email, but let's go through this whole process of proposing a topic, proposing a research question, proposing a working thesis that may change as you learn more, okay? Have fun with it. Don't, don't approach it as a chore or as something to be afraid of. Approach it as um, embracing the fact that you are becoming a college level scholar.